John Hinderocker filling in for Laura Ingram today. And now we are delighted to be joined by Senator John Thune. How are you? Senator, uh, thanks so much for being with us. You know, right great, be- great to be with you. Go ahead. Right before we went to the break, Senator, I was just ticking off a list of places in the world where things are going badly, you know, where American interests are not faring well. And just real quickly, I, I think the point is it's not just one or two areas. It is really worldwide. We've got Russia. We, we, we've got China in the South Navy Sea. We've got Iran still working on nuclear weapons. We've got Iraq, uh, Christians being slaughtered by Islamic radicals. Afghanistan, Taliban advances. Libya, we have to evacuate our uh, embassy. Egypt, uh, couldn't have screwed that up worse. Offended everybody uh, in that country. Syria, 150,000 dead. In the Western Hemisphere, we've got Russia back. You know, Russia yeah. uh, trying yeah. to extend influence. And what is going on? This is a worldwide phenomenon. It is. It's a. It, there. Are, and what it points out, John, is that there are worldwide consequences for the president's lack of engagement. And I don't know if you saw it, but you know, even the Washington Post uh, this last week, and the editorial page editor there had written that, uh, and, and the quote was something to the effect that we've witnessed as close to a laboratory experiment on the effects of U.S. disengagement as the real world is ever likely to provide. And I, you know, the strong American leadership requires a president who's fully engaged, and this one is anything but that. And and we're seeing the consequences of that. Uh, the world craves American leadership. They need it. Uh, they're not getting it. And uh, what you see is a whole lot of chaos in a whole lot of places and the world becoming a much more dangerous place. Senator, you know I'm no fan of Barack Obama, Obama but, but still I want to be fair, you know, and not just reflexively blame him for everything. So let's just try to connect some of these dots. I mean, how do you see... Uh, Obama's uh, uh, retreat, you know, cut cut defense spending, uh, it, but it's more than that. His attitude toward American power, his negativity toward our own history. Uh, you know, how do you see that coming into play in some of these trouble spots around the world? You know, it's it's interesting. The disengagement. Um, I mean, in a lot of ways, he campaigned on getting us out of these places. But you, you know, you can point directly to his. Uh, you know, drawing a red line in Syria and then not following through on it and what's now happened there and how that's started to just uh, um, create all kinds of problems in Iraq and not, not leaving a residual force in Iraq. There's a lot of decisions along the way that this president has made where clearly um, it, it's, to me, it's just a disengaging from the world. And I think that he's very concerned about his political standing here at home and he knows that his political base in this country uh, wants not to be involved in these places around the world, but I think what people don't realize is just how much, how much that puts at peril, in peril, and at risk uh, America's national security. And we are now uh, uh, much less safe uh, as a result of uh, bad decisions that this president's made. And I think because he's focused so much on what's going on politically here in this country, as evidenced by his, uh, you know, constant fundraising. You know, right now he seems to be a lot more concerned about the November election than he is about the long-term consequences of his policies for the national security of the United States. Now, one area that we can talk about, and I think link directly to the policies of this administration, is Russia. Now, you know, 10 years ago, who would have imagined that we would be reading news stories about Russia on the march, trying to retake the Soviet empire in Eastern Europe. But, you know, you can trace that directly back to the, the famous reset button and, and, and so forth. Well, you can. And, you know, everybody thought Russia was on the wane. They're not a serious economic power. They're they're completely dependent upon energy. And yet here they are, as you said, they're on the move. And I think that you can, yeah, you can point back to specific things. Um, and if you look at the missile shield in Eastern Europe uh, and the president withdrawing from, from some commitments there, uh, you, you can look at even uh, more recently here things that we could be doing, uh, LNG export to Europe to lessen their dependence, economic dependence upon Russia for energy, uh, economic sanctions that the United States could lead on. And once again, we're, we're leading from behind. We're waiting for the Europeans to take the first step, and then we're going to follow their lead. Well, that just hasn't happened. It hasn't worked historically, and it won't, it won't work now. But yeah, you've got a you've got a, a nation now that is very much emboldened and a leader who I think really does have a vision of reestablishing the the old Soviet empire and um, uh, United States, the only real superpower in the world right now, apparently unwilling to do anything about it.
you know, Putin, say of him what you will, is a tough guy. I mean, he really is. He's an old KGB officer, and if you give him an inch, you know, he'll take it. He is. I mean, he's a, he's an apparatchik. He's a he he is somebody from that old school, uh, and um, it just seems like uh, you know we've got a leader who is not up to dealing with someone of um, of that caliber. And it's going to take. I mean, these guys prey on weakness. You give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. That's the nature of the beast. They are bullies, and and it's like a bully on the playground, the only way that you are able to stop them is to confront them with strength. And that's what we've really been missing in the equation. Here we just don't have a president who projects strength, who is willing to use, uh, you know, American power and not just military power, but uh, both hard and soft power to to get these guys' attention. And uh, it's leadership. It really does come back. And I think there's a real crisis, a competence crisis right now that our country's facing, not only on all these events that are happening around the world, but uh, also a, a lot of the domestic uh, things that are going on here at home. You can look at what's happening on the border, for example. Another uh, instance where the president is completely disengaged, and we're seeing the consequences of that. Yeah, that's a place where, where foreign policy and domestic policy kind of merge as, as these right. people swarm exactly. across the Rio Grande. We're talking with Senator John Thune about the general collapse, really, of American power and influence around the world. And and one, one other country I'd like to just talk about for a moment, Senator, is, is Iran. You know, by rights, Iran should be on the front pages. It, it was on right. the front pages, and, and nothing good has happened. It's only gotten worse, and it's just been crowded off by other disasters. But the reality is that these negotiations the Obama administration is engaging in are just a, a farce. And, and all the while, Iran is working away on nuclear weapons and working away on delivery systems. Where, where do you see that, uh, that story ending? I think they are Iran, Iran right now is benefiting enormously from all the other things that have uh, distracted um, you know people's attention around the world and as a consequence of that they are able to continue you know, we knew they were going to extend this deadline that was the July deadline was going to be missed and so they get another four months and all it does is it buys them another four months they can they're able to continue through the uh, centrifuges they have to enrich uranium and we're uh, the, the, they continue to get closer and closer to that capability and and right now um, because of uh, Ukraine and because of the Middle East and because of the southern border and things that are that you know are really distractions um, a very very serious threat uh, existential threat to the region of the world is uh, is building and uh, and that's another example where if um, we had demonstrated stronger leadership earlier on in areas like Syria and Iraq and and Ukraine um, I think we would be much better able to focus on what's happening in Iran right now but that has enormous implications uh, for the region for Israel uh, and and for the United States and I, I fear that uh, all we're doing is uh, giving them more time giving them some some freedom some relief from the economic sanctions that they had been that we had been imposed on them and uh, you know to the tune of billions and billions of dollars now their economy is getting some relief from that uh, and uh, and all it does is buy them time it's a it's a it is a very real problem and a real crisis John and to name just one more there's we could go on and on and on you know with Libya and Egypt and and so forth but to name just one more you know, China is devoting a lot of resources to building up its navy in the South China Sea, and it's now starting to lean on its neighbors and starting to claim islands and territory and so on. It just does, you know, they're pushing to see what's going to happen. There was a time when our navy was unchallenged, but now China doesn't see it that way. No, they don't, and and they also also right now are are benefiting from uh, the way in which the United States is is distracted. Uh, but if you look over the horizon and the threats, uh, the threat matrix of the future beyond these immediate uh, crises that we deal with, um, their uh, desire to assert more authority, to to pick up more ground uh, in that region of the world is uh, is a is a very serious threat um, as we look into into the future. And I think that. Uh, the American, you know, again, America's ability to project power in that region of the world uh, depends upon having a strong uh, national security uh, funding policies, a willingness to, to um, you know, assert America's interests in that region of the world and protect our allies. And I think right now what you're seeing, again, is in a country that's very much emboldened by the weakness that they perceive uh, in America, America's unwillingness to confront even the, the threats that we face today, let alone the threats that we face 
in the future, and people are playing on it. They're taking full advantage of it, and that's only going to continue as long as we uh, we have a president who seems to be very much uh, disengaged from the world stage. It, it really is um, troubling. It's very problematic. It, it creates, uh, I think, uh, huge concerns uh, about the future, and um, that's just another example, another region of the world where where this uh, the, you know this president's leadership has really, I think, it really matters, and and uh, or in this case, lack of really matters. Well, it's very troubling. Uh, Senator John Thune, thank you for being with us. It's been great. I hope we can have you back again. We'll look forward to being on, John. Thanks so much for being on, John.